Saturday Social is powered by EA Sports FIFA 23 with PlayStation. But we've got to start the show by talking about Manchester City. Joe, that performance, my word, midweek against... What Rumbridge. are we watching? What are we watching? The, the aggregate score against the, the most dominant team in, in Champions League history was 5-1 uh, in a semi-final. And also, don't forget, that was a few days after they beat Everton 3-0, which means... I hate to admit it to you, the treble as a United fan is still on. And Starts it got a lot a bit of shaky. people. You are, are you Starts nervous? Starts to get a bit shaky. Don't get nervous. Starts to get a bit shaky. Uh, uh, it, it did get a lot of people talking, though, didn't it, about where this Man City team ranks amongst the greatest ever. And that is the little task that we've given our guests today. Yeah, absolutely. So in front of our guests, we've got some of the greatest teams in Premier League history. You're going to have to come to an agreement to build the list of the five greatest teams in Premier League history. It's not going to be easy to agree. <laughs> I don't think I've seen your suggestions and they are quite different. And at the end of it, we'll ask you where this Manchester City side feature on that list. Where are Ooh. you going to put them? So should we jump straight in? Yeah. At number five. Fifth who, best number five. Team. Who do you want at five? At number five, uh, Thogden, have you got any sort of huge, uh, huge thoughts on this one? Yeah, I, I do. I think at number five, I would personally go with Arsenal Invincibles. I think they deserve to be on the board. Do you know which one that is? Arsenal Invincibles. Yes, that's yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Arsenal Invincibles. Now, the reason it isn't first, and some people might put it higher, is because the season itself, as you said, will have 12 draws. It, they didn't break any records in terms of points, but... To go a whole season without losing is a record that no one has ever Only got. team to ever do that. Yeah, no, yeah. only team to ever do that. And in itself, that's an incredible stat. And, 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 and Rory, what's your thoughts no, on that? No, my, my thoughts on this... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's my steady, idea. Steady, steady. You, you know, look, I mean, look like you've got strong opinions I don't think the Invincibles are on the list. Why? Come on, Rory. Why would they be? Why, I've, got another, I've got another Arsenal team here. Th this is a disgrace. Already, th this a disgrace the establishment that we're not having Invincibles <laughs> on the list already. OK, OK. You've got another Arsenal team. Well, Before you talk about that team, mm. why no Invincibles well, I th for you? I think, I think that the Invincibles... Firstly, being Invincible, I think, is an arbitrary fact. I don't think it means anything. It's completely meaningless. You could, you could go Invincible and be relegated. You could draw every single <laughs> but game. But they didn't. They won the league and no, were invincible. Could, but being invincible, it doesn't actually mean anything. I also think that we all buy into this invincibility thing. It doesn't exist. Like, ask Wayne Bridge how invincible this Arsenal team are. Wayne Bridge will disagree with you. They actually lost that season seven games. So calling them invincible, I think, is a bit of a misnomer. And it isn't as good as this Arsenal team. This Arsenal team of 2002 was sensational. By the way, I think this is a very important fact, Arsene Wenger himself, Arsene Wenger himself... Chris and this, his best ever team. So this team, yes, it secured three less points than the Invincibles, but it also secured two trophies. This team won the double. Winning a double is historic. So this is, this is what we have to weigh up. So this got an Invincible, but... three points more, an incredible season, one that Arsenal fans, their trophy's golden. That one has three points less. Yes, they won another trophy. I'm happy to put either team on the board. I'm just happy that well, we've got space What I would say about either is, yes, that's a great... Winning the double, you're right, that is a double-winning team. But other teams have done the double mm. before yeah. and after that. No other team has gone un invincible but, before or after that in the Premier League. But mm. is the pursuit of football not for trophy accumulation? And therefore, the more trophies you accumulate, the better the season. Is it not that simple sometimes, football? Like, sometimes we try and break football down and make it this really complex game. Other times, it's win as many trophies as possible. And this, this team won more silverware mm. than that team. Also, I'm going to go through it again. You want to argue with me, fair. But Arsene Wenger said this I'll is his best team. I'll happily argue with Arsene Wenger. I think it's the Invincibles, if we're picking between the two. I would say Invincibles as well. Also, by the way, when we say Invincibles, if any Preston fans are watching, we know they did go Invincible back in the day, but before <laughs> the Premier League year, in that. case anyone jumps us. Should we go Invincibles then? I think it's, it would. I think it's not happening in the top five. five. It is 1-0 one one Thogden. Thogden. Let's go number four. Don't forget, we can move this about and there will be movement at the yeah. end when it comes to City. So, uh, Rory, do you want to take the lead for the fourth best team in Premier League history? Yes. I, for fourth, my... I think you went Man United. My shout is going to be Manchester United, Which Man United of team? 08. OK. okay. I'm going to go Manchester United. That beat you in the Champions League final. That beat us in the Champions League final, won the Premier League. I think arguably has the most mesmerising front three that the Premier League's ever seen. Like, what was going on then with, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo... Uh, Wayne Rooney, Carlos Tevez, I think that they were at times unplayable. It obviously had the tail end of people like Paul Scholes and the, the class of 92. It felt like such a dominant era for Manchester United. Mm. The other thing that I always want to bring into this, context is very important. Manchester United were dominant, then Chelsea came along. Chelsea became the dominant team. Chelsea were winning Premier League. They then got it back, they clawed it back, mm. they yeah. it yeah. back. So I think that this, point, right? this 2008 team certainly deserves... Three titles in a row, that team. Mm. Obviously, multiple Champions League finals in and around that. They were kind of unfortunate that they were up against, you know, Pep's Barcelona yeah. side yeah. that was maybe the greatest team football's ever seen. 
emerging. Yeah, Xavi, they, they Iniesta, certainly were. Messi. They, I think I think if if they were up against any any other opposition, they would have had another Champions League to their name. Yeah. And then I think there would be no question mark about this. I know that they're the small margins that we operate, but I think the 08 Manchester United team is weirdly, I think chronically underlooked and under represented in these conversations. Mm. Mm. Actually, Rory, I completely agree with you, but do you? I, I'm going to bring in another uh, competitor, uh, another United team that actually won the treble. <laughs> and I, this no, low, no, I'm not saying this low. Four. Listen, if you were to play Tevez, Rooney, Ronaldo, 87 points in the Premier League, 79 points, we're talking about the Premier League here, if they faced off, which team wins? It's yeah, obviously they won. 08. I know, they, want, I know they won the, the trophies, trophies, the treble winners. Absolutely. Which... They both deserve to be on the board. But we've got a Centurions to talk about. We've got some of the best teams we've seen over the last few years. They both deserve to be on the board. I would honestly say, I would say that, that Ronaldo, Rooney and Tevez era would score more goals, especially growing up in Altrincham, 0-1. That team just had the whole world looking at them. I think, I think on their day they would win. I know it's a treble over how many trophies? Less trophies. Did they, was that a double? Or? Yeah, double, Premier League. Double, yeah, Premier League, League and Champions League. And then out the FA Cup to Portsmouth both, for Rio yeah. Ferdinand in goal. Yeah. They both deserve to be on the board. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's no, there's okay. no doubt that they're on the board. This, for me, is false. The, the reason why I'm... What I've got to push back on, dog, I don't want to, to spoil the surprise, but I'm going to fight tooth and nail for that to be my number one. Number one? Over yeah. Centurions? Of course. Over everything. It won the treble. Over City's team right now. Winning the treble is impossible. It's like, it's literally impossible. That's why it's here. I know it's potentially going to happen again and Manchester City are sensational. But a treble is impossible. So you, and Phil, they did it. Are you happy to put 07? Yeah, put, yeah let's put 07, 08 and 4. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll save the discussion. We'll come to one yeah. in a bit. Yeah, because there's yeah. a lot of discussion to be had. Okay, three. Is there an agreement here, potentially? Three, I think there is possibly an agreement. Three, I'm going to go Centurion. Oh, no, there's not going to be agreement then. Three, I'm going, I mean, I'm going Centurions. So, obviously, the highest points total in Premier League history. Yeah, and, and three domestic trophies. Uh, no, two domestic trophies. Highest points total ever. I think that this is... It's def- a disgrace uh, it's that d- you're putting this low. What, what's your... Why? Most away points. Most points broken. They had about four players that got double figures of assists. David Silva, KDB, Raheem Sterling. Uh, the list goes on. It was one of the most incredible teams. They broke all the records. They broke all the records. Uh, How... I mean, we're talking about the Premier League here. Well, they didn't break all the records because they didn't do the, the treble. Like, if we if no, we're talking about the Premier League. We're talking about the Premier League. Yeah, but it's a Premier League team. If greatest you're gonna team got, in Premier League greatest, history. Greatest team in Premier League history. If you're if you're going to argue for this to be higher, then it needs to eclipse the two teams that you think it, it goes above. So you would argue for this number one. Absolutely, I, I believe that team. If it faced off against any of the squads we've got here, it would win. If you want it three, you want it one. Do we agree on two? And we look at your other choices. Yeah, is, is that an yeah, option? Okay. Good bit of democracy. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. Right, so for, for my my shout for second, which may now have to go in third, yeah. was Mourinho's first year. Mourinho landing in the yeah. Premier League, totally changing the history of Chelsea. It was Chelsea's first title for 50 years. The stinginess, the miserliness, miserliness at the back, the way that we just didn't concede yeah. goals. Like it became a joke. Like mm. who's going to score against Chelsea? I think mm. Luke Moore managed to do it for for Aston Villa, but it became a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a theme. You know, like who is ever going to yeah. score mm. against Chelsea? We conceded 15 goals that season. And do you know how a lot of records, I think, are there to be broken? So, uh, p- points tallies, for example. I remember when 90 points made you great, and I didn't think anybody would get beyond that, and mm. they've got beyond it. I remember when Alan Shearer's record felt like it was insurmountable, and now, obviously, it's looking like Harry Kane will do it. Yeah. 15 goals at the back will never be beaten. Like, I genuinely believe that 15 goals, John Terry, Ricardo Carvalho and Petr Cech, I think that that is the most stingy backline that we've ever seen. It is obscenely low, obscene. that, isn't it? Yeah. It's it is obscene. Like, and nobody gets close, you know. Nobody and, gets and we, close And we forget that. as well then, it was a Wenger Fergie constantly going for the league mm. and it was Mourinho to come in, bring a few lads from Porto and just absolutely smash it, break the record, only conceding 15 goals. I completely agree that this deserves to be on the board, even though I was three years old and I relied on Premier League years <laughs> to watch this. Still a great squad. OK, two, two trophies as well. So you're putting that in three, so which, I'll which have means you got three. one left. Am I guessing that it is the, the mean, treble winning Man United team? It, then? Just, it just simply has to be, in my opinion, it just uh. has to be the treble winning Manchester United team. I, I almost see this as non-negotiable. They won a treble, which, mm. you know when you talk about winning a treble, if you look back over history, it's so difficult to do. Mm, I'm talking yeah. about like the elite teams in Europe don't do this. I think, I think PSV did it once in the 70s. I think Bayern Munich have done it. It's so difficult. Difficult. Barca have done it. Barcelona. Mm. Barca. Yeah. But it, when, when you think about the clubs that have done it, Ajax, it's like the creme de la creme. Yeah, yeah. It's so difficult. I, I would also agree. I, I think it is, you have to have the treble winners because they are the three biggest trophies. Also, no one else has done it other, in this country. Do you know what else and it's so difficult to do. You know the do. players in this team? Like, you know when, when Thogden just said there, and, and I think there's a, I see where you're coming from, but you know when Thogden sort of goes, if, you, if they played each other, they'd win. I don't necessarily think that's a given. 
I think that this midfield, Hold on. this team... This team was... I've got in my hand right now destroys that team. No. It's, Haaland, it's really... De Bruyne. Not the a, City it's not team given. It's not that given we've like just that. seen smash Real Madrid, 14-time champions, did it last year. There's no one better ever than this era of Manchester City. Well, in the world of ever. football... Of the Premier League era. Oh, Premier League era, sorry. I think, I think on, some, on some level that's true. I think this collection of Manchester City players are possibly the best. But as first 11s, this Manchester United first 11 was basically unplayable. OK, I think they lost six games in the league. But they won every trophy that they could possibly win, aside from the League Cup. OK, they've won a treble. City are about to beat Chelsea. I think Tottenham won that year, actually, the League Cup. Uh, just to... yeah. <laughs> I think they have a really good memory. <laughs> they only actually lost three games in the league. Three games in the league. If it wasn't it's, for Nathan Jones so at Southampton, very few. this could have been a quadruple. You, you're forgetting that. Yeah, but They've I, had an Im- immense season. No that, one can stop them. That almost flags a vulnerability rather than something positive. They went out of the cup to Southampton and Nathan Jones. And they lost the to league cup to Tottenham. Yeah, so, do so, we, what's that? so let's put, let's put that one on, on the board. So let's winners. put the treble winners, winners on the board one, for now. But if the treble winners number one for now, and then I want to hear where... What? Joe, they... They won the treble. It has to be number one. You're looking at, no, you're looking at David Beckham. You're looking at like uh, Dwight York, Teddy Sheringham, Andy Cole. This t- Andy Keen Cole, skulls. one of the best strikers to have ever played the game, who somehow gets forgotten. Roy Keane, possibly, arguably, the best captain to have ever played the game. How can this team be chronically underlooked like this? I agree. Put that up for now. Yeah. But then I'm, my point is, is I mean, we saw Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher do a really interesting piece, yeah. didn't we, at the start of the week, on how many players get in each team. How many players from the current Manchester City side that are battling for a treble and look like they're going to kind of canter there, we're getting that Man United team. Let's start off by saying Gary and Phil Neville will get absolutely destroyed by the likes of Mahrez and Grealish and Haaland. Don't disrespect Gary Neville like that. Honestly, this is is another weird narrative going around. If they faced off both in their primes, City would... Smash them. Do you know what, do you this know, City team look, look, is look, winning. I, I rate. Okay, you use Mares. Let's use Mares as an example. Like the other side, right? Real Mares, sensational player. When I did my combined eleven of Real Madrid versus Man City, I said Mares in it. Combined eleven of those two. Mares don't get any change out of Gary Neville. Mares doesn't get any change out of Gary Neville. That's, like, that's this has become this has become a, a bit a of a joke. Maybe I agree with you Gary here. Neville I think is there's, sensational. A, there's, there's, something, there's, there's, there's been a change of narrative guys. recently yes. of like there were some really bad players. These players but, were like. Elite. That, that, that team was outrageous as well. Let's we, have we, it right. I'm, not, I'm not undermining what this team has done. I'm saying they're incredible. The treble is, is such a, a great thing to break. But what yeah. I'm saying is this City team would win. OK, I so we, we, need to, we need to put one off the board because it's going to be a, a definitive five, including this drop? Man City Some, team. Do you want to just drop every down so one? Do and Man City go top? Where, where do you put City? Does City Let's say Man City, City do win it. Man City they do team. win it. Yeah. Let's say they go on to win it. Oh, it's, time to, it's time to own up and accept that Haaland deserves to be first, De Bruyne. I think, look, I think if they win a treble, and the crazy situation that we're living in now is that I now believe the treble is more likely to happen than not. That's yeah. how amazing yeah. it is. If it happens, then we have to revisit this. But as things stand today, Manchester United are the only team to have won the treble and therefore they're the only team that go in at number Go on, one. We, need, we need a decision for City. No, that's fair enough. Them. I, and you let me have my decision at the start, so I agree with that. So we'll move go everybody on. down go on, uh, from second. Just put them out there now, because I don't... Then, uh, yeah, it's yeah, going fi- to it? be fiddly to move them all around, right. isn't it? Yeah, it's going so to be fiddly to move them all move, So move, there is confirmation. Uh, I've got, uh, uh, to be fine, I, I think Man City will win the treble. And then I think it's an amazing debate. Uh, yeah. Currently, though, they have got the treble winners, Man United. is the greatest team in Premier League history with this City team as second. So let us know what you think that. Is that harsh on this City team or is that right on that Man United team? Uh, enjoyed that. <laughs>